Leonard was raised by his mother alone in cheerfully concealed difficulty. His father having died tragically during childbirth. Though she was not by nature the soldering type, she taught him to look at life as a daisy chain of small events, each of which could be made manageable in its own way. She was a person for whom kindness was a very ordinary thing, who believed that the only acceptable excuse for not having a bird feeder in the back garden was that you had one in the front garden. As sometimes happens with boys who prefer games to sports, Leonard had few friends but lots of ideas. His mother understood with intuitive good sense that children like Leonard just needed someone to listen to them. They would set off to the shops discussing conger eels and have deep conversations about Saturn's moons on the way back. They would talk about tidal waves at bath time and say goodnight with a quick chat about the man with the longest fingernails in the Guinness Book of Records. But Leonard grew up at a time when quiet, imaginative children did not yet enjoy the presumption of innocence. His mother often found herself having to take his side against honorary teachers who complained that they found it impossible to get through to him. With patient maternal endurance, she would sit by herself at parent-teacher meetings explaining that, like his late father, he just lacked a eureka face. Even into his thirties, Leonard's mother still liked to fuss over him, buying his favourite ham for lunch, the one with fewer veins running through it, leaving tea by the bedside for when he woke up, and ironing well-meaning creases into his jeans, which Leonard would quietly iron out later. He repaid her thoughtfulness by keeping her company through her later years, and generally including her in the uncrowded bandwidth of his life. Leonard was not exactly sure, but there must have come a point when the relationship grew from a purely filial one into one of partnership. Though an adult son living with his widowed mother is a situation about which society is yet to adopt a formal position, it is clearly seen in second best terms. Insofar as anyone noticed, they might have assumed that she was overbearing and that he lacked initiative and possibly a sex drive. In reality, neither sought to limit or interfere with the other, both being independent people who liked their own space and who, quite simply, got along. Leonard did recall, with some awkwardness, around the suggestion that they go on holidays together, though he was not entirely certain which of them had first proposed it. Mother-daughter holidays are normal, of course, and father-son trips are famously storied as a way to come of age. Mother-son holidays, though, have the connotation that one of them must be a burden on the other. But truth be told, they were well suited as travelling companions. She was a keen walker and had good gallery feet, being able to wander around any reasonable exhibition in its entirety without being distracted by the gift shop honeypot that drew in tired women half her age. They both liked churches, and even though Leonard was not the religious himself, much of the world's art is. He would enjoy visiting famous paintings and sculptures in European cathedrals, while his mother would busy herself lighting a candle in the side chapel for her fragile, long-departed husband. She'd never really asked Leonard about girls, knowing the delicacy of the subject for him and also because of her own doubts about whether his apparently celibate life was due to a lack of interest or opportunity. For Leonard, the fact that he still lived at home with his mother led to a certain self-restraint on practical grounds. He had wondered what would have happened had he brought a girl home only for them to wake up to two cups of tea at the bedside the next morning. His mother passed away unexpectedly, one midweek night in her sleep, tucked into a duvet with her clothes all laid out for the next day. Her neatness being a sign of her respect for the small things in her life. The doctor noted the cause of death as a heart attack, but emphasised that there were no signs of suffering or drama. He said that her heart must have simply run out of beats. As Leonard was a shy only child of two shy only children, 
It was a small funeral. The front of the church was practically empty, with the exception of Leonard. As people tended to underestimate their relative closeness to the deceased and sit several rows further back than they should. With no extended family to rely on, Leonard had to multitask at the funeral, reading the prayers of the faithful, bringing up the offertory gifts and taking care of all the other minor jobs that are usually done by cousins and in-laws. The priest's sermon was a generic one about death and hope, which was a relief for Leonard as his mother disliked it when people summarised the dead person's life in glib caricature. Had he had the courage, Leonard would have spoken up and said that his mother looked after everyone in her life as though they were her garden boards. That is to say, with unconditional pleasure and generosity.